Hello, this is Ron Carr. I'm going to talk today about the mental exercises of step one. So many people get stuck on these exercises and make them into something that they're simply not. Um, the only step in initiation into hermetics that Barden laid out the uh, actual amount of time that it should take for this step is step one. And that was, it works out to be one month. Four weeks, month, you know, a little more if, if it's absolutely necessary. But there's nothing in step one that would really make that necessary. About the only thing that would really make that necessary would be the soul mirror work and making your lists and working out your lists of character traits. But the mental exercises should not be something that delays your progress. Um, I titled my uh, second uh, 2010 commentary on step one, Simple Beginnings. That is what these mental exercises are very rudimentary things that should not take any great effort, okay? I'm going to read um, the actual text from Initiation into Hermetics. This is the Rugeberg edition, which is, uh, even here, in this the translation of this section, um, the difference between the Merker um, translation is just self-evident. I mean, it, you get a whole different feel from what Barden says here. Okay, so the very first mental exercise is commonly called thought control. Now, that word control for the English reader, for the American English reader, specifically, is very misleading. Because in the German, I've been informed uh, that in the German original, it, the word doesn't mean you are controlling your thoughts. The word control in this context is more about a, a scientific experiment where you have a control subject. You're have a subject that is completely untouched, that you're just observing what it naturally does in its untouched state. And then you have the, the, the part of the experiment where you're, do, you're, you're, you're giving it the vaccine, say. And you're seeing what happens to them. In contrast, what happens to the control subject in its natural state. So, we're not here controlling our thoughts. What we're doing is just observing. It's the control subject. We're seeing what happens when we don't affect it in any way. Okay? So, here we go. Take a seat in a comfortable chair or lie down on a settee. Relax the whole body. Close your eyes and observe the train of your thoughts for five minutes, trying to retain it. Now, what he means by trying to retain it is don't lose track of yourself. Pay attention to what's going on. You know, see the continuity in the thoughts that pass through your mind. At first you will find that there are rushing up to you thoughts concerning everyday affairs, professional worries, and such like. Take the behavior of a silent observer towards these train of thoughts freely and independently. So, ordinarily what happens is your brain is going a mile a minute. It's just throwing thoughts around in there. And what happens when you notice them is you participate 
in those thoughts that are arising. You know, there's a thought about what happened during lunch hour at work, and you follow along with it. You know, you're captivated by it. Your, uh, your awareness is sort of trapped by those thoughts and carried along. And that's, that's what's happening in your brain. This exercise is about mind versus brain. Your mind is the observer, the detached, uninvolved observer. And that's what this exercise is about. You are going to just observe the thoughts that are flitting by and let them go. Let them flip by. Don't involve yourself in those thoughts. You know, oh, there's a thought about the lunchroom. Okay, blah, blah, blah. There's a thought about what, I, what happened on the way to work. Mm -hmm. You know, just let them go. Don't get involved with those thoughts. That's all this exercise is. It's very simple and it's very easy. You just observe your thoughts. You don't get involved with them. When you do get involved with them, because that's your habit, the brain wants to involve the awareness in these thoughts, and that's what gives the thoughts energy and expands on them and keeps them coming. You know, when you give energy to those thoughts, your awareness, your attention, they multiply. Um, that empowers them. But when you withdraw your awareness, they will just fleet on by. You know, they'll just go on by. Just pass. So, when you find that you are involved in one suddenly, because, again, that's what your habit is, you need to first recognize that that's what's happening. You need to be self-aware enough during this exercise, that's what he means by, you know, pay attention uh, to the thoughts. You know, keep track of what's happening in your brain. So, you, that puts you in the observer mode, but when you are, have become involved with a thought, recognize that that's what happened. Number one, recognize, oh, I'm involved in this thought. You know, what I'm supposed to be doing is just observing it. So, stop yourself. Stop your involvement in the thought and reorient to the observer. So, let go of the thought and start observing again. You get caught up in another thought. You recognize what's happening. You let go of the thought. Come back to the observer position, orientation, perspective, whatever, and begin observing again and the thought fleet by. You know, and the thoughts just go by. So that's this exercise. It's very simple. Okay, yeah. Uh, according to the mentality and the mental situation you happen to be in this moment, this, this exercise will be more or less easy for you. The main point then is to not to forget yourself, you're the observer, not to lose the train of thoughts, you know. Keep track of the thoughts that are going through. Don't let them pass unnoticed. You need to notice the thoughts. Name the thoughts. But don't get involved in it. But pursue it attentively. Beware of falling asleep, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. The attentive disciple will realize how, at the beginning, thoughts rush on him. You know, because that's the brain's habit. You keep processing thoughts, just keep processing thoughts. How rapidly they pass before him so that he will have difficulties to recollect the lot of manifold thoughts. But from one exercise till the next, he will state the thoughts come up less chaotic, moderating little by little, until at last only few thoughts emerge in the consciousness, arriving, as it were, from a far distance. Now that is what happens naturally. It doesn't take any forcing. 
You're not fighting against thoughts arising. You're just stepping back, not participating. And what naturally happens, since you're not giving energy to your brain, your awareness, your mind, is not giving its energy to what's going on in the brain, the brain slows down. It peters out. You know, it, that energy that the brain um, is carrying forward diminishes. <laughs> There's no energy to uh, continue the thoughts that rush through the mind. So it's very relaxed, very relaxing, and eventually very quiet. But it's just eventually, and you don't, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter that there are thoughts continuously passing through your brain. That's not the point of this exercise. It doesn't matter. There's no judgment involved here. All you're doing is withdrawing your focus from those thoughts, withdrawing your participation in the thoughts, and observing what's going on. This is your brain, your control state of your brain. This is what your brain is in its natural state without the participation of your mind. Now this is why I recommend stopping all psychoactive substances, all brain-altering substances that you consume for the duration of step one at least, while you're getting to know <laughs> what goes on in your brain in its natural, unaltered, unparticipated in state. Okay? So this is where it's important, because you want to know what your brain does. This is important information to have as a magician, you need to determine what goes on in your brain. In a sense, you are taking control of your mind. It's your mind that you are controlling here, not your brain. You have really no control over your brain. Your brain is this organic thing that just naturally does certain things. It processes thoughts. It processes sensation. It does all these things that are separate from your mind. And here, you, as the observer, you're shifting your awareness to your mind as opposed to your brain. And the mind, this is what you are learning to control. Because as a magician, you must control your mind. You are going to learn how to place your mind, your awareness, your focus, wherever you want, and keep it there for however long you want. As a magician, this is just basic. This is something you must learn as a magician, and it's very easy to learn. It is one of the fundamental powers of mind, okay? So, in this first exercise, what you have learned is how to become the observer, how to detach your awareness from your brain, from the habitual jabber of your brain. So now you have all this mental power, basically. You've isolated your power and identified it in just this one simple exercise. And he sets this out for a week. This week, this work of thought control, to this work of thought control, the keenest attention ought to be given as it is very important for the magic development, a fact everybody will realize later on himself. And that's what I was talking about, this mental power. This is very important. So here's the first step in taking that mental power, becoming the observer. Now, <clears throat> the second exercise is often overlooked. Um, <clears throat> and it has to do 
with day-to-day -day life, keeping track of yourself. You know, it's your mind. Again, your awareness needs to turn in on yourself, not just on your brain uh, in meditation, but your brain in everyday existence. Because your brain, again, is just flying with thoughts. So seldom are we actually, you know, applying our whole awareness to what we are doing, to what's directly in front of us in the moment. You know, we'll be working on something and thinking about vacation next year. You know, so this exercise is about keeping your attention, your mental awareness on what you are doing in the moment. So, that's just like observing the mind. Because you're sort of observing what your mind is doing throughout the day. Is it observing what your brain is doing. What part of your brain is your mind giving its attention to? Is it giving its attention to the part of the brain that's processing a million thoughts? Because that goes on whether your eyes are open or closed. Okay? Are you going off with those thoughts? Or are, is your awareness in your mind focused on what you are actually doing in the moment? The conversation you're, carry, you're carrying on with in the moment. Or is your awareness, your mind, truly there? Or is it following your brain on these other thoughts while you're carrying on this conversation? And most often, you know, a part of our awareness at least is off with these other thoughts. So what we're doing is we're bringing all of our awareness into whatever we are doing in the moment. And let's see how he describes this. Up to now we have learned to control our thoughts. Again, what we have done is taken control over where our awareness is placed, where the focus of our awareness is placed. That's the control over our thoughts that he's talking about. We've taken control of our minds such that we, our thoughts are not flying all over the place. We're here in our mental awareness observing those thoughts flying all over the place. Okay? The next exercise will consist in not giving, away, not giving way in your mind to thoughts obtruding themselves on your mind unwanted and obstinate. For instance, we must be able not to occupy ourselves any longer with the tasks and worries of our profession when we come home from it and return to the family circle and privacy. So, that's what I was saying. You know, be focused on what is before you. You know, be here now is really what this is all about. Be here now with your awareness. Okay? All thoughts not belonging to your privacy must be set aside and ought to, to manage to become quite a different personality instantly. I mean, this is kind of a silly example that he's giving, but and just the other way around in your job, all of your thoughts have to be concentrated on it exclusively and we must not allow them to digress or wander, say, to say home, to private affairs, or somewhere else. This has to be practiced time and again until it has developed a habit. <clears throat> In other words, you know, you're going to lose it throughout the day. And your mind sort of wanders and not focused on what you're doing. So, again, just like with the observer exercise, you recognize that's what's happening, and you revert to the focused state of awareness. That's all it takes. Just do that often enough. 
you know, keep catching yourself straying in your mind, in your brain, and refocus your mind on what you are doing. It's very easy, very simple, just takes practice building the habit, catching yourself every time and bringing yourself back to focus. Very simple. Now this doesn't have to be perfect before you move on to the next exercise. As he says, having obtained a certain skill in this exercise, you may turn to the following one. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> so, you know, you're becoming aware of your drifting awareness <laughs> throughout the day and correcting yourself. As long as you're starting to build that habit in your everyday life, you will start then to practice this um, meditation. And it's what I call a one-pointedness meditation. <clears throat> the purpose will now be to hold on to a single thought or idea for a longer while and suppress any other thoughts associating and obtruding with force on the mind. Choose for this purpose any train of thoughts or ideation or a suitable presentation according to your personal taste. Hold on to this presentation with all your strength. Refuse all other thoughts vigorously which have nothing to do with the thoughts exercising. Okay. <clears throat> now, it, it really doesn't need to be as combative as he implies in this text. And I don't know what, how the German original really conveys. Maybe softer. Um, <clears throat> so you're not so much fighting against other thoughts as you are focusing your awareness on the one thought that you started with. And it's a thought, an idea. And this is where the um, elements section, uh, I mean the, the theory section of initiation into hermetics is very handy. You can choose an item from the theory section to focus your awareness on, to meditate on for the duration of your exercise period. Now he, he sets a, a minimum of 10 minutes, and that's, that's a good minimum, but Minimums are a real trap. You know, you're sitting there with your watch and timing, oh God, I, I got up to 10 minutes, so I'm okay now. You know, it, it's sillier. Oh, I'm only at five minutes, I've got to struggle, and you know, get six minutes. Um, the point of any exercise and in initiation into hermetics is to learn and master the technique. And duration is irrelevant. You need to be able to keep a single focus for however long you need to do it. If you only need to have focus, this focus for five minutes, you know, fine, it doesn't matter. You need to be able to focus for a half hour if you need, for an hour for a whole day, for several days at a stretch. You've got to be plastic in this ability. It's the ability that matters, not the, you know, 10 minutes uh, that matters. 10 minutes is something good to aim for in the beginning, but you're not going to stop there by any means. What matters is mastering the technique of being able to hold your awareness to a single thought. Just like you held your awareness to the observer mode in the first exercise. It's exactly the same. So instead of observing the things that are going on in your brain, you've already learned how to let go of that you need to focus on a single thought. What happens then is your brain will participate in your mental, in your mind's focus. 
And at first, what your brain will do in participating is it will start with that idea and then start taking all these different tangents. Start going off in these other directions that are slightly loosely related to your idea, but then get further and further away. Um, so, just like when you uh, uh, recognized that you were no longer observing and you were participating in those thoughts, you have to learn to recognize when your mind, when your brain takes you off on a tangent, you recognize that it's happened, you come back to your focus on your idea or train of thoughts letting go of the tangent where your brain has taken you so you refocus you again get taken on a tangent you recognize it and you refocus do that enough times and you your ability to stick your mind and stay with your mind on a single focus increases every day. It, I mean, from experience to experience, it will increase. Each time you catch yourself and refocus, your power of focus increases and becomes very strong. So, what you have to learn in this exercise, in very short order, within a week of doing it, at, least, at the most, I would think, is how to focus on a single idea to the exclusion of the brain. You know, the brain will participate and, you know, enliven your, your focus, your contemplation, this is contemplation, of an idea. So, I, I suggest for the first week of doing this, you, you focus on the elements because they're already coming into play in your soul mirror work. You're having to divide your, your character attributes to the elements. So you want to know what the elements are. So take the fire element into your, your one-pointedness meditation and focus your mind on the fire element. You know, think about the fire element. Explore the fire element. And just the fire element. You just bring your brain back, your mind back to the fire element every time it strays and focus it on the fire element. Then you work with the water element and then the air element and then the earth element or how, whatever uh, sequence you want to work with. <clears throat> but focus on each of these elements and learn something about the elements in this way. That's very easy. That is the, actually the third exercise, but really the second exercise, a mental exercise, takes up these two parts. <clears throat> Focusing your mind on what you're doing during the day, <clears throat> and then focusing on a single thought. So this is really, you're exercising now the power of your mind that you learned in the first exercise, the power to focus the mind. So now you're focusing on one thought. <clears throat> if you succeed in doing so, you will be fit for a new exercise. Let us then learn how to produce an absolute vacancy of mind. Lie comfortably down on a bed or settee or sit in an armchair and relax your whole body. Close your eyes. Dismiss energetically any thought coming upon you. Nothing at all is allowed to happen in your mind. There must reign an absolute vacancy. Now hold on to the stage of vacancy without digressing or forgetting. At first you will manage to do so only a few seconds only, but when practicing it oftener, you will succeed better in it. The purpose of the exercise will be attained if you succeed in remaining in this state for full ten minutes without losing your self-control or falling asleep. Now, 
let's break that apart. <clears throat> so, you're relaxed in your chair laying down with your eyes closed. And you want to, at this point, be having, having let go. <clears throat> you want to have let go of the mind, the brain's chatter. Okay. Now, you are in the observer awareness. This is, you know, second hand to you. This is no problem to you. You've been doing this for a couple of weeks already. And you've gotten to the point where you can focus your mind on a single idea. So where you are going to focus your mind at this point is not on an idea, but on the silence. The silence of an empty mind. A mind without, you know, any awareness of thought. So you you want to shift your awareness from what the brain might be doing to that silence, that emptiness. That's all. You just focus on emptiness. When thoughts arise, because, hey, they're going to arise. Remember, that's what the brain does. Thoughts arise, you see them, and you let them go. You're not focused on the thought anymore, on that fleeting of thoughts. You're focused on the silence. Any thoughts that arise, you let them go. If you get carried away in a thought, you recognize that you've been carried away in a thought and you refocus to the silence. That's all there is to it. Just always refocus to the silence. Come back to the silence. You do that over and over and over again. Eventually, you won't have to do that. Eventually, those uh, thoughts of the brain cast out there will just, you know, happen without your awareness attached to them at all, you know? You will just be unaware of them happening and you will have a true vacancy and silence. And it will build, you know. Now, <clears throat> Barden puts this at the, the end of the mental exercise, the last mental exercises, in how I've uh, uh, scheduled step one, you do the observation, the thought control observation for the first week, just exclusively, twice a day for the first week. In the second week, I introduce the single-pointedness meditation. So you keep doing the observation while you start doing the single-pointedness for the second week. And by you know the end of the second week, you will have gotten the, the one-pointedness. One-pointedness, <clears throat> you, you will have done it in enough times that it's comfortable and it's no problem to just focus your mind on a single idea. So you're doing both of these exercises for the second week. Now, the third week, I introduce, well, um, the exercise that of uh, focusing your awareness throughout the day on what you are doing. Hey, that's going to be for the rest of your life. You know, it's introduced during the second week, and so you're doing that throughout your day during the second week, and during the third week, and, you know, it's, it just continues, because... I mean, that is a practice of a magician to be self-aware, constantly self-aware. And that's what that exercise is. It's self-awareness throughout the day, not just when you're doing your hermetic exercises, you know, your hour each morning, an hour each evening of, you know, hermetic exercises, not your only time of self-awareness from now on. <laughs> um, so, 
During the third week, I introduce the vacancy of mind. And you start practicing all three of them. You are, every time you sit down to meditate, you're going to start with, you know, checking in on the brain. What's the brain doing today? What are the quality of thoughts passing through? Etc. Then you will shift to a, a single pointed focus and and practice that for a time. <clears throat> you know, you will contemplate whatever subject is at hand. You know, if you're still working with the elements. You know, you just keep with that for now. <clears throat> and then in the third week, you are also going to be working with the vacancy of mind. And starting out in that relationship with the silence and focusing on the silence after you've done these three, you know, these other two types of meditation. You shift from a one-pointedness fo uh, focus on an idea to a one-pointedness focus on the silence. You're just shifting your focus from an idea to the silence. Okay? It's the same as a one-pointedness meditation except your your subject is silence is nothingness okay vacancy and you do that for the rest of the month all three of them together for the rest of the month by the end of the month you will have mastered uh, the vacancy of mind sufficiently for step one. You don't have to become a Zen master in step one. You know, this is not something that you need to prolong step one to master. By the end of step one, you will have mastered it sufficiently for step one. But the thing is, the point is, you do this exercise for the rest of your days. You know, it's not just a step one exercise. You know, he says that in here, that you continue. Uh, it's a practice for a lifetime. In fact, in the way that I schedule the exercises, of initiation into hermetics, these three exercises, these three mental meditational exercises are continued. Every working session throughout the rest of the course, you start your exercises with a little bit of thought control, you know, check in with your brain, See it quiet down, then you go into a period of contemplation so that every day, twice a day, you are having an experience, a contemplative experience. This is so important. You need to contemplate so many things throughout your magical training. You're not going to ever have a lack of things that are going to require your contemplation. And then you go into the silence, the emptiness. And this eventually nurtures your soul, the silence, the vacancy of mind. And it changes. Throughout the years of doing it, it will change so much. It's such a, 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 a rich uh, experience, an enriching experience. You will discover so much in that silence. That silence is not a quiet place, you know? <clears throat> so, and you will learn what's there as you progress in that exercise. And, I mean, you will welcome that time of silence every day, twice a day. So, <clears throat> and that really sets these three exercises set the stage for all that is to come. Within them are the basic techniques of initiation, the mental discipline, 
that takes you everywhere, takes you forward in all of the steps, in all of the categories, mental, astral, and physical. You know, your astral exercises with the mirror, they're taking advantage of this one-pointedness meditation because all of this is one-pointedness. You're focusing your mind, you know? Same with the physical exercises. You're focusing your mind when you're doing these things, inhaling, eating, bathing, you know? They all make use of these basic abilities of a magician. Simple beginnings. Step one, these mental exercises in combination with creating your soul mirrors and learning the basic magic of food and water and this habit that you build up every day of, you know, how you treat your body and all of this should take one month to achieve because it is very simple beginnings. <laughs> okay? <sighs> That's enough for me then. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.